Hello everyone and welcome to our REDCap one-on-one -on -one online training. The purpose of this training is to give a brief overview of REDCap and its features um, with a focus on database design or building a REDCap project from start to finish. This course was developed by the Children's National REDCap support team and as you can see we've made it available online so that users can complete it independently. So as you progress through the modules, please feel free to pause or rewind as needed, um, especially during the more interactive components. The first thing we would like to draw your attention to is the Children's National REDCap Support button, which you can use to get in contact with our REDCap support team at any time. You'll find this button on the left-hand toolbar of every REDCap project, and you can also find this button on the REDCap homepage at this URL. And you can access this home page even if you don't have any REDCap projects yet. And essentially clicking this button will take you to our REDCap administrator support form, which we also refer to as RedTicket. And here you can submit a request to receive help with your REDCap account, enable a certain REDCap feature in your project, or ask your own general question. So this is the best way to get in touch with us. And after you submit this form, a REDCap administrator will get in touch with you as soon as possible, normally between 24 to 48 hours. Okay, and now let's move on to the REDCap training. So what we're going to cover in this course um, is first a brief overview of the REDCap features and a very brief history of REDCap. Then we'll talk about um, the REDCap policies here through the uh, CTSI CN, which is the Clinical and Translational Science Initiative between, uh, and it's a partnership between Children's National Medical Center and uh, George Washington University. Um, then I'll talk a bit about uh, the different types of studies that you can have in REDCap and the different project setups. So whether you're kind of doing a classic cross-sectional study or a more advanced longitudinal study. Um, we'll cover some more details about longitudinal studies and survey settings in our more advanced REDCap 102 course. Um, I'll also give an introduction into the basic structure of REDCap, and then what we'll spend most of this training doing is uh, what's typically more of an interactive component where you will all use temporary REDCap usernames and passwords to log into REDCap and create a new project, which will be a data entry form project. And you'll build this new project from the ground up, and I'll be doing that process along with you. Um, so by the end of this training, you'll see how to build a new project, take it through from development to production. You'll get experience with the online designer. Um, we'll, we'll briefly discuss the data dictionary um, and uh, we'll test the project by doing some data entry and that'll be the same way that you'd enter uh, real records in your own projects. And then we'll review some how to make changes after moving from development mode to production mode. Um, I'll also review user rights and data access groups and very briefly at the end of the training I'll talk about some data management best practices. So REDCap stands for Research Electronic Data Capture. It is a secure web-based application for building and managing online surveys and databases. It's fast, flexible, easy to use. You don't need to have any coding or databasing background to take advantage of all the features in REDCap. Um, Without you having to do any additional work, it will be available, uh, REDCap's available in a mobile version for smartphones and tablets or in a typical desktop version. You don't have to do anything if you send, for instance, a survey to somebody and they open it up on their desktop, uh, the desktop version. If they open it up on their smartphone, they would have the mobile version. Um, you're able to, uh, with REDCap, export data to data analysis packages. So it's very easy to export as a CSV that you can then open in Excel or import into R, SAS, Stata, or SPSS. This is a big advantage of REDCap over other tools, especially other survey tools like SurveyMonkey, where exporting the data in a form that's readily analyzed can be quite challenging. You can also set up custom reports in REDCap, so you can create your own queries and filters to generate a, however many series of reports that you want. Um, and you can use that to subset your projects either by certain study subjects or by just taking a very large project that might have very uh, many fields and questions 
uh, to create a, a shorter report that you can view uh, and export the data from only that report. You can also um, manage a contact list of survey respondents or create survey links within REDCap to distribute surveys, and REDCap has a bunch of built-in tools for that. We focus a bit more uh, on the survey tools in the REDCap 102 training. Um, you're also able to save your data collection instruments in REDCap as a PDF to print. This can be useful for IRB um, reviews, so you can just save everything to a PDF, print them out, and give them to your IRB. It's also useful in case there's some power outages or internet outages or things like that. You can always go to these PDFs as a backup. Um, there's also some scheduling features built into REDCap and a number of other useful tools. REDCap also has some more advanced features. So it has some validation features which help you do some data quality control. These are basically things that you've probably seen before um, in other online forms. So there's things like email validation to make sure that somebody's put in a proper email address that has um, you know, an at sign and a .com or a .org or a .edu. Um, there's also validation fields for phone numbers, for uh, dates, and so on. REDCap also has calculated field options, so it can do some math and calculations for you. Although I would recommend generally collecting the raw data and doing those calculations yourself in Excel or another tool, but it's possible to have REDCap do them for you. There, you can also um, upload files to REDCap. Um, there's some branching logic features. There's an API for people that have a bit more coding background and want to take advantage of the API to push and pull records. You're able to do that. Um, you're also able to set up some data queries and to use things like piping. Piping is where if you have collected um, a participant's name, you could pipe that into a field to customize it. You may have seen this in a lot of you know, fundraising emails that you've gotten where they'll say, um, hello, Jane. You know, they're piping in Jane from a variable that they've collected. You could also do that in REDCap to personalize things. Um, and the major strength of REDCap is it was designed from the very beginning to comply with HIPAA regulations. So there's built-in user rights controls. I'll show you how to take advantage of those. It just means you can set what features and what data access uh, different members of your study have. And um, there's also a built-in audit trail for data security and tracking. So any change that it's made in any REDCap project is automatically put into a, a log. Um, and you can go back at any point to see that, and that log can't be modified. So you, you know that uh, a new record was created at this date and time. It was later edited by this username. This username um, exported some data from your project and so on. All of that is kept in the audit log. Um, and for those of you that may be working with FDA uh, funded studies, um, REDCap is 21 CFR Part 11 ready. However, we haven't been formally audited by the FDA, which is uh, required to be completely 21 CFR Part 11 uh, compliant. 